Hi, this is Cheryl Johnson, and today I want to talk to you about color tips. On artlessonsnow.com, you'll find ebooks or PDFs and a free color tip that I encourage you to sign up for. But let me give you a quick review. Color tips. It's really important that as artists, we share what we've learned with others in hopes that their career will be enhanced. Jim and I have spent a great deal of time painting and I've been painting for 40 years and I really appreciate all your following of the Instagrams and YouTubes and we look forward to working with you for a very long time. Also, I'd really like to invite you to go to our Facebook group and sign up there. We'll be adding videos and different things of interest so you'll be able to follow us uh, on the Facebook site. It turns out Growing your skills and thriving as an artist is truly possible, and doing this together is certainly simply way more fun. Now, let's start with color. First, pick a color. My favorite color is red, and I tend to shoot a lot of flowers, and I find myself shooting azaleas and roses, and when I was in Hawaii, I shot a lot of beautiful flowers. So let's talk about the five most important aspects of color. And understanding these foundations will really help you have the tools to help your art to be much better. So what are they? There's value, saturation, temperature, harmony, and complements. So first off, what is value? Value is simply the lightness and darkness of a color. Saturation? It's when you pick up a tube of paint and you squeeze it out, you don't add any gray or black or white. It's just fully saturated or a pure pigment. And what is temperature? Well, we all respond to temperature. I personally like the warm weather and you think of warm, hot temperatures as reds and yellows and vibrant colors like that and cool as temperatures like ice and snow and violet. So temperature is the warmth or coolness of a color. Now, let's talk about harmony. What do you do when you blend all these colors together? That's what's so important, blending. And learning to make something I call magic mud, which we'll talk about more in a few minutes. So harmony is learning techniques or tips to help you pull your colors together in a harmonious way. How you combine colors is really crucial. Today, the world is more pastel. If you look out there at the fashions, the colors of the different paint companies like Ferro and Ball and Bear and all of the different ones, the pastel colors are pretty predominant. Jim and I tend to go for vibrant colors like pure saturation and reds and blues and yellows, but we're trying to do more pastels and we'll be sharing with you more videos where we incorporate pastels into our paintings. Now, let's talk about compliments. Wow, God uses compliments every day. Just look out there at the green. The compliment of green is red. So if you look at the green shrubbery and the bushes and the grass, and then you look up and you see the flowers, you'll see the compliment. Complementary colors are pairs of colors that when combined or mixed, cancel each other out by producing a grayscale like white or black. If you take a bit of red and you take a bit of green and you mix them together, you're gonna to get a muted gray or dark color. So that's what I mean by canceling out. When placed next to each other, they create the strongest value for those two colors. Also, complementary colors are the ones that are opposite each other in the color wheel. Now, let's talk a little bit more about value. Value, again, is the lightness and darkness of a color. Notice in my painting, some colors you might think are dark are really gray, and some colors you think are light are gray. So learn to photograph your paintings while you're painting them and turn them to black and white. It's a really important tip. Value to me is more important than color. I say that often, and I can't stress it enough because your eye sees values, the darkness and lightness. When you go to a painting and you look at it, your eye immediately goes to where the dark and the light contrast the most. Value is noticed before color by the human eye. 
Trust me, it's important. Now let's talk a little bit more about saturation. Saturation defines a range from pure color, which is 100%, down to gray, like 0%. The saturation of color isn't constant. It varies depending on factors such as its surroundings and, and in what light the color is seen. Saturated colors draw attention due to their brightness and intensity. I encourage you to go photograph flowers and look at the intensity and look at the shadows. Saturation is the purity or intensity of color. The more saturated colors are, the ones we usually purchase full strength, like cadmium red or ultramarine blue or yellow. It is not really possible to make cadmium red more red or redder. <laughs> it is fully saturated when we buy it. It is only when we add other colors, especially black and white, that the saturation or the value changes. When colors are grayed down with black and white, they become less saturated or less intense. However, saturation is always relative. If we make gray with black and white and a tiny amount of orange, what happens? This gray would be more saturated than a gray with just black and white. So let's talk about magic mud. Wow, I love magic mud. Magic mud is when you lay out your palette of colors and then you take a little bit of each of the colors and mix it together and set that aside. That's the magic mud. And you add that to change the values of your colors. And using that a little bit everywhere in your painting will make it more harmonious. Now, back to temperature. Remember warm colors. What are they? Yellow, orange, red, even violets. And what are cool colors? Cool colors are on the blue, the greens. Temperature is the warmth or coolness of a color. Red and orange, again, are, are warm colors. So we talk about colors having warmth or coolness. So think about that when you paint. Color temperature is very important when you think about harmony. To create harmony, it is more important to pay attention to your use of warm and cool colors. If you pick up reds and yellows, they are very intense and energetic. To soothe them down, to make them less intense, add a cool color to it. That changes the mood also of your painting. So, colors be, can be called shades of a color, a hue, when we talk about hue, it's the hue is red or orange or blue. And then the tint is whether we add white or gray. Shades, tints, and tones should also be taken into account when planning your color scheme. Shades are created by adding black to the original color or hue. Tints are created when we add white. And then when we add gray, we create tones. Hue is simply the name of a color, like blue is a hue. Remember, when you change the hue, the color remains in the same place on the color wheel. This means that you can create rich, highly layered color schemes using only a few colors. I sometimes will only use five colors, and sometimes I'll only use three. My three primary colors, and then I add black and white. Okay. Harmony. Harmony is the magic. You know, if you just ask the parrot, think of those beautiful birds out there with their wonderful colors. I think God got carried away when he made parrots. Adding a touch of one color to the mix or one color to the feathers will just make them vibrant and beautiful. One color becomes the magic mud or it can become the hero color of your painting. You can make red the magic mud. You can use shades of reds or tints of reds. Remember, what are they? Lights and darks. Color harmonies are like harmonies in music. They are beautiful. Oh, 
Harmony in music is the sound of two or more notes heard together simultaneously like a chord. And that goes for color too. If we use three colors together and they're complements or they're blends, that makes them magic. Colors that are in harmony must contain at least one common color. I'm gonna say that again. Colors that are in harmony must contain at least one common color. For example, if red, blue, and green have had orange mixed into each of them, these colors will appear more related or in harmony. Wow, that's a very valuable tip. I hope you remember it. So, I tend to use a lot of oranges or red, and I use it as my magic mud. So, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about color harmonies, complementary colors, split complementary colors, analogous colors, and learn how to mix them. So, stay tuned for that lesson. Thank you. This is Cheryl Johnson, and I hope you have more joy every day. Explore painting. Take flower pictures, go outside, shoot the roses, shoot the tulips that are blooming now that it's spring. Walk down the neighborhood path and see the flowers blooming. I photographed flowers everywhere I went in Hawaii. Once I got very involved in painting watercolors and I did a lot of roosters and chickens and I even made one with a lay on it. And then I went outside and photographed poinsettias that were growing. You can never photograph too many flowers. And don't forget to pick the flowers. This is Cheryl Johnson. Have a great day. And don't forget, go sign up for color tips. And if you like this video, do thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great day.